Okay, so last week I posted the details of my second month on Universal Credit and that was me doing my calculations for the month that they were asking for, putting in the amounts that I'd earned, putting in the amounts that I had lost in expenses related to my business and coming out with a balance of income of £470 thereabouts. So I've now been in and checked because I had the notification to say there was an update on my file and they've made my calculations and they've told me what I'm going to get this month. Now this is very different to the previous month because the previous month I had been paid for doing the clinical trial which was just over uh, £2,500, that was a lump sum, so of course that cancelled out everything. This month I am on what would be considered a normal month's income for me and that's through having my uh, three cleaning clients and selling online, um, doing surveys, all the other little bits and bobs that I do to make an income. And so the calculations look very different this month and this has been a big surprise to me because I didn't really understand how it worked because everything was just showing zero last month. But this month is different so I can give you a better idea of what a normal month might look like and I'll be honest with you I'm quite surprised. So I'm going to be reading stuff off my laptop which is just here um, so I can get these figures right. So the first thing to say is that the standard monthly allowance for universal credit is £368.74. That is a standard amount for a single person living on their own, so to speak. So I have no dependents um, or anything like that. There is a um, like a housing allowance and I wasn't paying any attention to that. I've never been entitled to help with housing because I'm self-employed. I've never been on a benefit that ever allowed that. Working tax credits didn't have that as part of the element. Now, the housing allowance, the full housing allowance per month is £399.98. But depending on where you live, your local authority will have a local housing allowance amount, which has like a, like a ceiling on it. So, Theoretically, I am entitled to £399.98 towards housing, and then I pay my rent as normal, but it'll be decreased because my local housing authority doesn't allow for £399 or whatever it is. So they've said on here, £399.98, the amount we cannot pay the amount we pay cannot be more than your local housing allowance and it's put in a minus figure of 150 pounds and two pence so presumably what's left of that is housing that i'm entitled to which i find extraordinary um, and then there's another line which i haven't seen before which is transitional protection you get this because of other benefits you were on before you moved to Universal Credit. And I know that there is a, uh, a protected transition if you were forcibly migrated from working tax credits to Universal Credit, i.e. you didn't end your claim, you didn't voluntarily go, they made you go because obviously they're ending the legacy benefits. And all the advice that I saw was don't voluntarily go. If you voluntarily go, you won't get the transitional protection. So I just waited and waited and waited for them to let me know. And then of course mine came in, in I think it was, um, I think it was the end of May with a three month notice. And I didn't, I thought that was gonna be the end of it. Now my working tax credits, as a general rule, was always roughly about 240 a month. And it was based entirely on my yearly self assessments and was based on how much I had earned from my business and they topped it up to a certain amount but it wasn't a whole lot you know it was 200 240 pounds and each year they would readjust it so that it was falling into line so I don't quite understand how this works because it says I get this transitional protection amount um, because of other benefits I was on before I moved 
so presumably they are covering the working tax credits that I would have had. Now the amount that they're paying me for that is £190.99 which is most of what working tax credits would be. But of course we have all these other elements here. The standard allowance, the housing. Um, so what it means is that uh, my total entitlement, this is according to their calculations, my total entitlement on universal credit before deductions, that's before they've taken off all the bits I can't have, is £959.71. pence, Which is an enormous amount of money. So I'm really surprised at that. And you've got to bear in mind, when I went in for my second Universal Credit meeting, they looked at all the information I give them about my savings, about my income, about what I was doing, and the woman looked at me and said, you've got no chance of getting on Universal Credit, even with the projected transition. They're just not going to let you on this. And here we are. They're not only have they let me on, but potentially I could get £959.71. This may well be because it's a self-employed element to it. It may have a lot to do with the protected transition. So I'm going to go to page two of my screenshots for my calculations. So, next we have um, the deduction section, which tells, which tells me what they're taking off from that 900 plus amount. Take, take home pay. Take home pay is what's left after tax, national insurance and any pension contributions have been deducted. Now as a self-employed person, I pay my national insurance once a year in January and I pay for the full year in one go based on the size of my business, um, the approximate income of my business. And that, I think it's about £160 a year, so I pay for my national insurance every year regardless. It doesn't matter how much I earn, to be honest with you. They did trial something um, some years back where they made it voluntary and people on low incomes just weren't paying any national insurance, which of course is going to affect your state pension and any other things you might be entitled to. So, I mean, I've not worried about it. I've just always paid my national insurance because um, getting to the minimum of, of um, state pension alone seems worth it. And I use things like the NHS so, and uh, whatever. So I feel that paying it is a good thing. Okay, so whatever that take-home pay is, that's a minus amount of £258.90. So I don't really understand what's going on there, but they've taken that off anyway. Um, I didn't think that uh, Universal Credit was tax deductible. I have, it was taxable, sorry. I've looked at the rules, and when I do my self-assessment next year, apparently I don't have to include Universal Credit in the same way that I would never have included working tax credits. It's not a taxable benefit. Anyway, I'll work that out another time. So, earnings from self-employment. My earnings for last month were £470.73, as I detailed in my last video about this. Um, and what they, they, they do a deduction based on that. So every one pound you earn in take home pay reduces your universal credit by 55 pence. Fine, that's no problem. And additionally, they also take uh, money off any savings that you have that are over 6,000 pounds, up to um, 16,000 pounds, which is the ceiling for savings you can have and still apply for working tax credits. You can have 16,000 pounds in savings, um, but uh, I think that's anything between 6,000 and 16,000 pounds is also they take some money off for that because you're privileged enough to have savings. So that means that my total deductions from that 900 and whatever is 432 pounds and 90p. Which leaves a balance payable to me this month alone, which in fact it's just a couple of days away that I will be getting this payment, of £526.81. Which, when I saw that, I thought, there must be something wrong here. I, why am I entitled to this? I've been self-employed since 2012. Um, I've never had any help. 
what I earn is what I've got. And for most of, of that time, I haven't earned it enough to live on, which is why I've had other jobs. It's why I've always dipped into savings. That's why I have savings is because it's always topping my income. I have never, since I've been self-employed, earned enough to live on month by month. Now, there is a, a, a minimum income floor which you are supposed to hit as a universal credit claimant. And I think mine is about £1,200. I can't remember exactly, but it's the standard that's decided, I think, across the board for what you need to live on to keep your basics going. And that does actually work out about right. I've looked at everything I spend across the entire year, divided it by 12, and it does come to about £1,200. So their calculations are right. And don't forget, I don't have any extras. Universal Credit is designed to get you by on the basics. That means putting a roof over your head, paying your utilities and your bills that you have to pay by law, and it covers um, your food and things like that. It doesn't cover you having the latest mobile phone or a subscription to Netflix. It doesn't cover any of that stuff. It just covers the basics. So they've topped up my £470.73 by £526.81, which is insane. And it does mean that for the first year, in I have no idea how many years, I've broken even this year. And so I'm just really surprised. So I, I looked this up on Google because I thought, hang on, I thought everybody was worse off under universal credit. And it does say some people will be better off, some people will be the same, some people will be worse off. I think most people are worse off, but it depends on how you do it. And I followed the advice and tried to play the game, and it's ended up working out in my favour. Now, this is a start-up year, which means when I get to next, next August or the, next July, they will cut me off without a dime because um, I need to be self-sufficient. It's because I have too many savings. That will cut me out for a start. Uh, I'm self-employed. That will cut me out. I won't be entitled. But that gives me a year of breathing space to really start to work on this because I need to get that amount down. Because I find it absolutely extraordinary that they're giving me over £500 a month. Um, which now means I am breaking even. It means I don't have to spend those savings. It means that I can leave them locked in high interest accounts um, for the next year. And increase them and improve on them. Because they aren't there for spending. Um, I was going to do a post about the fact that if you have savings, that is not spending money. It's the equivalent of having a pension. I don't have a pension. I will have a state pension. I'm paid up on my state pension, so if it still exists when I retire, in 20 odd years, we'll see. Um, then that is essentially part of my pension because I don't have anything else and it's not an enormous amount of money I'm not going to retire on it I've got no chance it wouldn't last me very long but I try to be really careful and I only dip into the savings when it's paying for bills that have to be paid it pays my rent every six months because I have to pay six months in installments it makes sure that I can pay my water bills and my gas and electric doesn't mean I can go mad and I've got the central heating on all the time my heating won't go on until December unless we get a really, really cold snap. And I try my hardest to use everything on the absolute minimum. My gas and electric direct debit is still just under £36 a month. And I try my dandest to not use anything that I don't have to. I've really toughened up in the last six years since I've been living here in my own place. Uh, because it's a very different thing when you're living in a house short house share or I was a lodger in someone else's house where everyone just seems to use everything and it's fine. When it's your your own bills it's incredibly important that you get everything down to the bare minimum. So my savings are not for spending and that's why they're all locked away in fixed bond accounts where I can't touch them because they are not for spending. It's not for me to go on holiday, it's not for me to buy a new car or a new laptop or a new mobile phone. It's, it's there because 
in 20 years time uh, I will starve to death on the state pension uh, because the state pension currently is paying about what I earn every month and, and I already know that's a shortfall. So if you are self-employed and you are on working tax credits and you're about to be migrated or you've had your notice, um, hang in there. Let them forcibly migrate you. You will get the transitional protection. You, even if your savings are over 6,000, over 16,000, you may well still get it because this protected, protected year, this start-up year for new claimants who have been migrated, forcibly migrated, not voluntarily gone, makes a huge difference. This is going to make an enormous difference to me uh, because it means I can pay for things outright and it gives me the breathing space and the mental breathing space to be able to work harder on the things I need to change like improving my business income in the middle of a cost of living crisis all the things that I need to do to make that business work harder and work better don't pay me I don't get paid to make product videos for YouTube I don't get paid to make products I get paid when I sell a product so I need to get good at the marketing at the social media and find out what works right now very little works people aren't buying stuff but if you are self-employed and you are about to be migrated from working tax credits, I would advise you to hang in there. Go to the meetings. It's not that big a deal. If you're used to doing self-assessment every year, the paperwork for this is easy. Honestly, it really is. Um, and I think it might be worth it because if you can get five or six hundred pounds every month to top up a, a small income because we're all struggling right now, do it now don't forget i'm a single person on my own i have no kids i have no dependents i lead a very frugal frugal life i don't spend on anything but the essentials so i'm kind of quids in so to speak although over the course of a year my outgoings would work out at 1200 a month because things like my rent go out in six monthly chunks and i rob that out of my savings and then replace it over the six months so it's like a seesaw action so I have different circumstances to most people, but it's worth a shot. For the little hassle that it is to get that start-up year, this is worth it. So this has been a real surprise to me. Um, and obviously that will always change depending on what income I have. Next month I think I will have more income, I've had more cleaning work in. And um, from the beginning of December I can start applying for more clinical trial work because I've done my three months that you have to wait after you've completed one. So I might get another one, I might get another one in December, I think it's getting a bit too close to the end of the year, but I've got the uh, January, February and most of March um, I have free to be able to try and get myself another trial. So I could make myself, you know, another thousand pounds two and a half thousand pounds depending on the trial so things are always going to seesaw but um, that's my update it's a hell of a surprise because I don't think any, I didn't think anyone cared about the self-employed we tend to get missed off of everything so really surprised about that so that's my advice if you're self-employed and about to be forcibly migrated hang on in there